The Dow index had its worst week since June of 2012, but don't you dare blame this on Procter & Gamble. Investor Beat starts now. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hill, joined in studio by Ron Gross. We're going to talk about Procter & Gamble in a moment, sure. but let's start with Microsoft. An another bright spot. Another bright spot <laughs> in the market today. A lot of red in the market today, but the, we're going to talk about a couple of stocks that are actually up today. Second quarter revenue, $24.5 billion, and it really looked like Microsoft was doing well in a lot of different divisions. Yeah, it's good to see. Xbox strong, Surface strong. I'm really happy to see the cloud business and the data center business turning in solid results. Um, Windows, a weak spot, not surprisingly. Uh, but all in all, a record quarter. Stocks reacting favorably. Uh, we like the stock a lot right here. We're cautious ahead of a new CEO coming in. We really want to see where that goes, especially because the company is in a big transition right now. So we're not buyers right now. We do own it uh, in Million Dollar Portfolio, but we're watching closely. Steve Ballmer, CEO, is going to be gone by August. He'll be retiring by August. They're still searching for his replacement. He's gotten a tough rap during his tenure as CEO. You look at results like this, though, do you think that a year or two from now we could be reevaluating the legacy of Steve Ballmer because the stock hasn't really moved, right. but the profitability of the company and the fact that they are now in consumer products in a way that they weren't before? I don't know. I'm just wondering if we, we need to preemptively reevaluate Steve Ballmer. I tend to not be too harsh to to change the direction of a huge ship um, overnight is very difficult to do. And as the PC business changed, um, they weren't really on the forefront of where the changes were going. They're trying to do it now by transitioning more to a device company. That's kind of a hard thing to do. I'm not actually sure it's the right thing to do. Um, but what I'm sure of it's, is that it's time for a new leader to, to take the, the reins. Um, the next big thing is what to do with Nokia, which will be integrated in. It's an $8 billion acquisition, a company that is not doing well. The handset business, mobile business is tough. Um, so they have their work cut out for them, and definitely it's time for someone else to, to, to lead that. If someone hasn't already written the parody song, how do you solve a problem like Nokia? They need to. Nice. Last question on Microsoft. The stock up about 30% last year. Is it richly valued? Is it a little too pricey, or do you I, still like it? Here? I still like it here. Um, obviously, um, there's things that they need to do, as we said. The transition is, is difficult to pull off, but I do think the upside is compensating you for the risks associated um, w with that uh, execution. But until I see who the new CEO is and make sure that that person is on board with the new direction and perhaps there's a different direction we don't even know about under new leadership, I would be cautious and just wait. All right, let's move over to Procter & Gamble. Uh, second quarter results in, the stock is up. Help me figure this out, though. Profits down 16%, sales <laughs> flat year over year. Why the enthusiasm? It's, it's a bit of the expectations game. Things were a little bit better than um, analysts and investors uh, thought they would be. So the stock reacts favorably um, to that. But listen, P&G is what it is. It's a very large consumer products company um, that is mature, has only some slow kind of growth in its future, uh, bloated cost structure that they're chopping away at to really try to improve margins. And, and they're making some headway there getting some um, some good growth from emerging markets, uh, which is nice to see. But here domestically, there's, there's really not a ton of growth in this business. So you have a mature blue chip company, a 3% dividend yield. It's a, it's a fine company. It's just not going to knock the cover off the ball from an investment perspective. When you're thinking about your portfolio, it definitely fits in that space of steady dividend pair. They're not going away anytime soon. And yet, would you like to see them get even smaller? If you're a shareholder, do you want to see them get a little bit leaner, a little bit more nimble, so that in addition to the dividend, maybe you get just a little bit more growth? Well, the new CEO, which was the old CEO, he yeah. came in to kind of um, take this turnaround a step further and, and cut the, the costs, which we do need to see, um, get a little bit more growth. So if you have a blue chip company that has some growth, a stable, nice dividend, uh, I think that's not necessarily a bad place for some of your capital in a portfolio. You're, you're not going to really beat the market if you're too much, too heavily allocated to those types of companies. 
but you know, it, it is a great company and they do a nice job and they have wonderful brands. All right, let's finish out this week and good riddance when you consider the performance of the Dow. Okay. What are you watching next week? Well, Apple reports on Monday and I'm really interested to see what they have to say. Um, we do own a, a, a nice stake in that company. Um, this week we heard that perhaps two new phones are coming out with larger screens, which actually I think will help them overseas, especially in China. Um, I think they're going to scrap the 5C um, is what we're hearing. Um, but I, I want to hear all about this. You know, what, what are they going to do with their cash hoard? They have Carl Icahn knocking at the door, um, and he's not going away anytime soon. Uh, so I'll be very interested to listen to the management's commentary. Let's go back to Microsoft for one second, because one of the big surprises today, you look at the media coverage, the sales of the Surface tablets really surprised a lot of people. They doubled, not year over year, but just over the previous quarter. Do you think there's any type of surprise we could see out of Apple on Monday? I think things. I think numbers are going to be good. You know, Apple notoriously sandbagged, which is they would underpromise and then yeah. out outperform. We're going to sell it. ten they, iPhones. They don't really do that anymore. They try to be more re realistic in their guidance, and in fact, we've seen them underperform a, a bit as a result of that more realistic guidance. So I expect there to be no no great surprises. They'll be within within a few pennies of where they should be. All right, we'll check it out on Monday. That's all for today's episode of Investor Beat for Ron Gross. I'm Chris Hill. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Monday.